Sword Art Online is one of the greatest animes of all time. I just finished watching the Einfred arc and I loved it. The character development was amazing, the plot was interesting, it had amazing characters. Oh, Klein was awesome. I loved Klein. Oh! Oh! No! You think I'm talking about the actual theory? No, I'm talking about the parody! Let's talk about Sword Art Online Abridged. Sword Art Online is one of the worst animes I've ever seen in my life. It is absolutely terrible, and it is actually incredibly offensive. Some of the content in the second half of Season 1 with Asuna and Suguho, or whatever his name is, is borderline offensive. No, through that, it is offensive. But the scenes, scenes like that, that are borderline rape scenes, have no place in a show like SAO. Now, I'm not talking barely about shows that have content like that. Shows with content such as that can be good. But stuff like that had no place in SAO. But honestly, what could I really add to this? What could I add to the dumpster fire and shit show that is Sword Art Online? One of the worst things to ever grace humanity. Nothing. Mother Basement, Digibro, and Gigguk have been complaining about this show for like four years. And they do a great job. I'm not going to try to compete with them in shitting on SAO. I don't want to. I love watching them make fun of this series. It's a lot of fun. This show is terrible. It's so bad. But the Abridged series by Snuffing Witty Entertainment. It's actually incredible, and I want to talk about it. I think the Abridged series is good enough that it deserves an official review. So we are going to talk about why I love SAO Abridged. Everyone in SAO is an idiot. The moonlit black cat needed money. So they went and entered a death dungeon to fight death monsters in a video game where if you die, you die for real. To earn money. They fought death monsters with a chance of real death. To earn money. Monsters that they weren't 100% sure they could defeat. To earn money. I think we can all acknowledge how stupid that is. Now in SAO, when a higher level player is in your party, it causes higher level enemies to spawn. And Kirito being a higher level and hiding that fact from his guildmate, the guy not to tell them that before he entered the death dungeon. You only need the most basic understanding of cause and effect to understand how stupid this is. Yet Kirito does it anyway. So instead of doing what, say, Team Four Star would do and turning this plotline into a joke, Nothing Witty Entertainment rewrote the entire plot. Kirito did not hide his level from Keita, and Keita once Kirito in the guild because of his high level. Not including Sashi, all the other members of the Moonlit Black Cats are NPCs, and the NPCs are set to auto loot. And guess why they're in the death dungeon? Because they need money? Yes! Want to know why they need money? Because they're in debt to the mob! Now let's talk about Sashi for a moment. In the original SAO, Sashi dying had one purpose to give Kirito a reason to be a solo player, so we can be super cool Kirito. Sachi is not even a character in the original theory. She is a plot device. A human MacGuffin, if you will. And when she and the rest of the moonlit black cast are killed, it is because the members of the guild are really, really stupid. In Sword Art Online Abridged, they die because of the fact that Sachi Set them to auto loot. If you remember, the rest of the guild are NPCs. Sachi also experiences lag in this game and expresses major concern to Kirito that her lag will get everyone killed. However, instead, it would be good of a mistake Sachi made herself, not because of something she couldn't control like a bad internet connection. She also is one of the few people in series that Kirito grows to care about at this point in time. 
Kirito so far has been an asshole that only cares about himself and gets great enjoyment from watching others suffer. And he goes through a very interesting character arc, and it's not until the end of the season that he decides he wants to protect people because it's the right thing to do. Because he likes them. He expresses disinterest for a majority of the beginning of the season in teaming up with other players. He doesn't like it. Other people are annoying and stupid. Kirito has an actual character arc. Something that he never had in the original. And that is already making this series better. It's also helped that Kirito is absolutely hilarious in SAO Abridged. Which is something I have yet to point out. Even though they are seriously trying to make a better version of SAO than the original, it is still an abridged series, and it definitely is. It is really funny. But until this point, Kirito hasn't really trusted anybody. He hasn't let anybody in. He thought nobody was worth it. Sachi convinced him to try. He did. And everyone died. Kirito decided that it is not worth it. That he would write to be a loner. If he gets involved with other people, he will get hurt. Kirito later goes after an item during a Christmas event. And Klein, or Bald Deep 59, as Kirito calls him as a way of showing his power over Bald, tells him this, that the item may be able to resurrect dead players. So, to thank him, because he is honestly grateful, Kirito says, thank you, Klein, a name he had never once used. Kirito fights the boss and finds out it's just a hat formerly worn by Keita, and then decides to give up displaying one of my favorite scenes in the entire series, which I will be playing on screen. Does this look like the face of victory to you? You didn't get it? Oh, I got it. It's a hat. It's a god damn hat. Well, what do you want to do with it? Wear it, poop in it, I don't really care anymore. But I do suppose I should thank you. You made me realize that by being nice and letting people in, they'll just die. But even still, thank you for showing me that there's still a part of me that can feel like this. Because now that I know where to find it, I've killed it forever. So thank you. Thank you for freeing me. Balls. No. No. You were so close! You were almost a person! You were so close! Kirito gives up. And would you like to know who it is that convinces him to try to trust somebody to care again? That's right, it's Asuna and Yuki. Let's talk about the romance between Kirito and Asuna for a minute, guys. When we are introduced to Kirito, it is apparent that he is an asshole. We see him in the world's first ever virtual reality MMO, sitting there on the first day making fun of Klein for not being good at the game. First of all, this is done very well and it's very funny because the writing is very humorous. But it's also a good character trait. We see that the way Kirito enjoys SAO is by acting like an asshole. This is not him being bored. This is Kirito having fun. Throughout the story, it is abundantly clear Kirito is not like this in real life. In SAO, he is the asshole he always wanted to be, but couldn't be because he was always the one at the butt of the joke. He was the one that people were assholes to. In SAO, he gets to be the asshole. And Kirito enjoys that. We see this after his pebble story. I have a feeling you get beat up a lot in real life. Shut up! You're a power! When Klein literally said, you get pissed on a lot in real life. Kirito's exact reply to this is that here he has power. At the end of the series, or season, Kirito admits that being trapped in SAO was probably the best thing to ever happen to him. Kirito thinks he's better than everyone. And you know what? Sadly, he's right. Kirito is a genius in general, talking about things like building robot bodies and hacking into admin consoles. He is also a beta tester and incredibly skilled at the game. So when it is time to play the game, he's already really good. This gives Kirito a god complex. Kirito literally thinks he's better than everybody, 
And considering no one ever beat him in a fair fight, I would think that they he's right. However, when Klein called him out and said he is the most unbearable asshole Klein has ever met. You may be the most unbearable asshole I've ever met, but you are really good at this game. We could use you in our group. What do you say? You can meet my friends, we'll form a guild, and have all these adventures. It'll be great! Well, screw you too! Think you're too good to join my guild? Think you're all cool because you know how to kill a boar? <laughs> he runs off crying. He then proceeds to put up a front. He acts like he's an asshole, and he acts like none of nothing bothers him. He acts like he wants to be an asshole. Then we get to Asterna. Probably my favorite character in this show, by the way. Asterna knows that he is a fraud. Asterna knows that Kirito isn't that cool in real life. She can tell this immediately upon meeting him. Certainly. Speak from the heart. Funny, I thought I was speaking from my mouth, but eh, sure's what I know about biology. No one else wanted you in their group, did they? Shut up, it was mutual! Oh! Why did she do this? Well, it's because Asterna is insane. No, no, seriously, Asterna's insane. Like, she's the craziest bitch you'll ever meet in your life. Insane. So, she also puts up a front to get people to like her. Well, she's not good at it, she's certainly better than Kirito. There are two characters in this series that are so terrified of Asuna due to racism and verbal stress and horrible things she had done to them that they are willing to jump out of windows to get away from her. Asuna manipulates Kirito's PTSD from Modesto Sachi to get what she wants from him. She also reminds Kirito that unlike with Sachi, she is good at this game, and she is not going to die. But she's also insane. She commits arson against Liz when she thinks Liz is a threat to Kirito and her romantic relationship. Yeah, she burns down somebody's house because she thinks they're a threat to her relationship. Then there is episode 9 where Kirito thumbs up his thoughts and opinion of, of Asuna in literally two small words. Kirito and Asuna in this series are made to play off of each other. They're really good and because of their extreme personalities, it's very fun to watch. And that's what I love about it. While you watch them and find their religion very endearing, you're also laughing your ass off because it's so damn funny. And then come to the actual romantic interactions. In the original anime, these guys are married by like episode 15 and they're like 14 years old. It doesn't make any sense. In this series, they are doing stupid shit and making the wrong choices and talking about it and working through it throughout the entire season. And it is amazing. Seeing Kirito and Asuna work through this relationship and having no idea what they're doing shows that it is a teenage romance and it works and it's really dynamic. Episode 10 is probably, no, 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 episode 10, which is entirely about them trying to decide and prove to each other they both don't think getting married was a good idea, is my favorite episode of this show. They get married after having sex for the third time because they don't know what comes after sex. And then they proceed to adopt a little girl and use said little girl as a tool to try to prove the other one was wrong. They spend the entire episode using Yui as a machine to get the other one to admit they thought getting married was a good idea. Neither one of them is going to admit to the other one the other one was wrong or right because the other one would hold it over the one that admitted it for the rest of their lives. This is so awesome. The death of Yui is actually done so well, I'm not even going to talk about it and just say go watch the actual show. Now, I don't want to go into detail on Kaiba's motives because he actually does have motives in this. 
I just want to talk about how great it is that something with the entertainment fixed this problem. In the original Sword Art Online, when they beat the game and they talk about why Kayaba did it, his exact reply is, I don't even remember. In this, they actually throw shade at that by having him pretend that he doesn't remember and then telling them exactly this quote, how king stupid that would be if he did that. And how it had been two years, and then he proceeds to give them an answer. And the way the Kaiba revealed is handled. In the show, it's badly written and jarring. However, the way it is handled in this is amazing, and it makes sense, and everything clicks. You do need to see a lot of movies to get it, but it makes sense, and it's really, really good. It is done through comedy and callbacks, and often a commentary during the reveal would have to be one of my favorite things in all the Bridge series. Now for the side characters. Klein is great, believing in Kirito throughout the entire series. Honestly knowing that there is a real decent human being inside of him. Then there is Liz and Silica. My god. I have no words to describe how great this is. So, as I stated earlier, one of the reasons Kirito and Asuna work is because they can handle each other. Kirito can handle how insane Asuna is, and Asuna can handle what an asshole Kirito is. Liz and Silica both show a romantic interest in Kirito in their individual episodes that is immediately shattered by the end of the episode when Silica said, and I'm quoting her here, You're the worst person I've ever met, Mr. Kirito. I never want to see you again. Despite the fact that these people are in love with Kirito in the original, in this version, they are not his harem. They do not like him. Silica even said, I can't believe I wanted to sleep with you. You are an asshole. It is absolutely amazing. And the writing is 10 out of 10. Sword Art Online of Bridge is amazing. And as I said earlier, I spent like 10 minutes talking about Kirito and Asuna's character arcs. And it is really good. And when the season ended, I was genuinely sad. And then I learned they were doing season 2. And I was genuinely happy. And I plan on reviewing season 2 in like 5 years. Maybe, if I'm still on YouTube when it happens. I'm not quite sure. We're a long way away from season 2 being over. This episode came out a year ago. The final episode of season 1 came out a year ago. And we don't even have episode 12 yet. But, you know Bridge Theory. They take a while. And that's how come that more than Team 4 star anyway. So yeah, peace out guys.